Hi, we're from New York Hustle Incorporated. We've taught literally thousands of people to do the hustle on TV and in the major arenas and discos across the United States. And now we're going to teach you. On the album, we'll be introducing eight versions of the hustle. And the first dance we'll be dealing with is the American hustle. This dance started in the discotheques in New York City in the early 70s. And it really has become the craze. So we'll be dealing with the American hustle first. Everybody up. Face your partner. Okay, put your feet together. Here we go. This is Red Podcast, episode number 221. There's a big lie that entrepreneurs tell themselves and others. That's the lie of hustle. That's coming up. This is the Red Podcast, the marketing podcast for influencers. Rise above the noise. Expand your audience. Deliver impact. Here's your host, David Hooper. If you've listened to Red Podcast for a while, you know that I live in an urban neighborhood. People just walk up to my door with various offerings. A lot of them are quite interesting. They're also great marketing examples because these people are often selling things. And because of that, when I hear the doorbell ring, I pull out my iPhone. I've got a recording app called Dictaphone. Hit record. And I answer the door. Here's an example. It's What's going on, man? Merry what are Christmas. you doing? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. I'm, uh, I ain't got no work, so I'm selling uh, uh, not Christmas items, but yeah. I'm selling whatnots. Whatnots? What are that? Well, I'm going to show you. Let me pull it up. And they collect those items, too. Yeah. Got the hustle on on Christmas Day. Yeah. Ain't that pretty? What well, is nice? And there go the certificate. See, I don't, I don't have any need for anything like this, though. Well, I'm trying to set up a Christmas to uh, get me a Christmas present. You know, it's nice. It's just, it's not, not for me, though. Well, that's an item that you can set on your, uh, in your uh, glass cabinet. I don't have a glass cap. We're minimalists. Well, you can set it uh, any way you want to set it. Yeah, no, I, I, I appreciate it, but it's just, it's not going to be what I need at this time. Well, I'm, I'm setting these right here because that, uh, I got uh, like about, they give me 10 at a time. You know what You're I'm saying? You're buying them in bulk. No, I ain't buying them. I'm selling for the people. And, and, and uh, I need money to pay my rent. I ain't making them but uh, like five dollars off each one of them. Yeah. But I'm trying something new because I ain't, uh, you know, folks don't need grass cut right now. So I've been walking around, man, sweating yeah. on Christmas Day. I know. <laughs> I didn't expect I was going to see you. Yeah. You, were the, you were the last guy I thought was going to be knocking on my door on Christmas Day. I believe you. I believe you. Okay, my man. All right. Have a good holiday, and I'll uh, I'll see you in the and, new uh, year. I guess if you can give me something for Christmas or uh, anything, I I nothing. I got nothing, man. Okay, I got nothing. All right. Okay. So this guy, I don't know if you caught it, shows up at my house Christmas Day, Christmas Day, and he's selling trinkets, and he smells like alcohol. Now, this is a dude who'd shown up before. I actually hired him to do some lawn work for me and kind of backed off of that because he started showing up after dark way too late to do my lawn. He wanted to be paid in advance. You could hear on the recording, he started asking for a Christmas gift. He switched up his pitch. On this episode, I'm going to talk about what this guy was doing, lessons that you can learn from it. And also, the lie that we call hustle. This is the Red Podcast, the podcast for influencers. I talk about the holy trinity of influence, books, podcasts, and live events. If you've got a message that you want to spread and you want to make people care about it, this is the podcast for you. Hustle. It's a great catchphrase. It looks so good when you put it on a t-shirt, when you wrap it around a quote, Put it behind a beautiful piece of scenery. Throw it up on your Instagram, your social media. But not all work is the same, especially for somebody like you, for a creative worker. 
We're not making widgets here. Now, my guy at the door, he doesn't exactly have to be present when he's selling a trinket. Does the transaction, gets his money, he's on to the next guy. The same for when he's doing lawn work for me. Doesn't have to exactly be there mentally. Shows up, pushes the lawnmower, cuts the grass, pulls the weeds, done. But you, your work is different. You've got to be present. And you can have a really great 15 minutes that makes you more money and keeps paying residual income than you could having to work a job the rest of your life. I've got a buddy of mine, his name is Buzz Kaysen, wrote a song called Everlasting Love. Told me it took about 15 minutes to put this song together. Gloria Stefan has covered it. You too has covered it. 15 minutes of work. He's had a big hit on this song every decade for the last 50 years. And those are just the hits. Everybody and his brother has covered this song. Every time that happens, Buzz makes money. 15 minutes of work, done. He's set. You're the same way. You've got a book, you've got a podcast, you've got a blog, you do the work once, and you get paid on that again and again and again. It doesn't work for the guy who showed up at my door. He does that transaction once, he has to go do another transaction to make additional money. Now let's talk about the lie we call hustle. A lot of people, they get caught up in the hustle more than the outcome. It doesn't take hustle to write a song for 15 minutes. That's what I call the 23 hours concept. It's the work that you do to get you to the work that makes money. And that does take a little bit of effort. But it's not Hustle. If you get on social media, you see a lot of what I call hustle porn. Somebody will pull up his calendar, take a screenshot, post it on social media with the caption, oh, I'm so busy, hashtag hustle. There'll be a series of social media posts, Instagram photos, Facebook comments showing how busy this person is. Well, I'm starting my day here at Starbucks. I'm eating breakfast. I'm going to write a few articles, talk to a few clients, follow up on this Fortune 500 company that booked me to come speak later this month. Then I've got a meeting with my book publisher to go over artwork. People love hustle porn. It's very similar to what you see in these non-denominational mega churches, the kind that have a pastor that goes by his first name, Pastor Jim or Pastor Bob. He's got a soul patch, looks kind of cool, maybe has a few tattoos. It's got a Christian rock band behind him. Also behind them, a big screen with lyrics of a contemporary Christian song that you can sing along with. It's like Christian karaoke. And in these churches, it's very common to have somebody get up and share a testimonial. And they talk more about the drugs, the alcohol, the sex they were having, than they talk about what happened after they found Jesus, after they started coming to church. It's redemption porn. You've heard this. Somebody gets up on stage, maybe a rock star, his career kind of tanked, former porn star. My life was so far gone. Every night, 10 really hot, sexy fans would come to my dressing room and we'd have an orgy. We would f*** all night. I was getting my d- seven times a day. Sometimes I'd watch them f*** each other. And he goes on and on and on about that in the last three minutes. And then I found Jesus. Like a lot of Christians will be watching somebody just like that guy when they go to church this Sunday. We, as entrepreneurs, see a lot of people describing the hustle in very similar terms. So we focus on the hustle rather than what we're actually trying to hustle for. And the result because this is glorified and we start to model it, is we get on a train that we can't get off of. Coming from the entertainment business, I saw this so much. You get into the entertainment business, say you're a musician, because you want to play music. And then stuff starts to heat up in your career. You hit the road. You feel like you can't get off the road because you're hot and there are people that want to see you. And there are people who want to spend money with you. And you've got all the people on your team that are keeping you on the road because they're making money off of you. And then what happens? It burns you out. It costs you your health. 
It costs you your family, your relationships, and all the money that you've made, it means nothing. That's why this happens. All marketers are also entertainers. Hustle looks great as a quote that you can post on social media. Hustle looks great on a t-shirt. Looks great as an image on Instagram. We built it up to be this be-all, end-all, and if you don't have movement in your life, you start to think that you're not taking action. Nothing could be further from the truth. Let me tell you what real hustle looks like. Like a pulse. John Acuff. He's been on Red Podcast before. He's a New York Times bestselling author. He's on the road consistently delivering his message. Has a product called 30 Days of Hustle. And I think this is a great example of what hustle is. It's a pulse. You hit it and then you pull back. Movement is is not the same as action. You want action. And sometimes that action, it's happening when you're not moving. It's like the cycle of a tree. Trees grow in the spring, but before that, in the winter, they're hibernating. They're preparing to grow. So John Acuff's 30 Days of Hustle, yeah, you hit it for 30 days, but then you're taking time off. Just had a conversation with John Acuff. Took five weeks off. Not one speaking event. Sure, he's thinking about things like his book. He's doing other types of work but he's not on the road all the time. Five weeks off, could you do that? Most people couldn't. Now, when it comes to the pulse, it's not just 30 days on, 30 days off. This is something that I do daily. I've scheduled blocks of time with breaks in between. Right now, I'm working on my book, schedule a three-hour block, have a break, schedule another three-hour block. Within those blocks, use the Pomodoro method. Pomodoro timer set to 25 minutes. Take a five-minute break, set it to 25 minutes, take another five-minute break. So I've got that pulse within these scheduled blocks of time. When I hit the gym on weightlifting days, I lift, go lift heavy weights, take a little downtime to stretch, go back, then go hit the heavy weights again. That's a single workout in itself, but if you talk about it as part of a larger plan, if you've ever lifted weights or you know people to do, you do not lift weights every day. You have to give your body time to recuperate, and that's what allows you to keep lifting successfully. That's what allows you to bulk up. That's what allows you to get stronger. This is why people do steroids. It allows you to recover quicker and you can hit the gym more often, harder workout, and that's why you bulk up during steroids. If you don't have the equivalent of steroids during your hustle, something that's going to allow you to recover quickly, you've got to take time off. So here's the bottom line of the lie that we call hustle. And I want you to keep this in mind when you're working on your book your podcast, your live events, your blog, however you're spreading your message. Not all work is equal. Sometimes the downtime is as important as the actual work, the actual momentum. Less is more. Quality is much more important than quantity. That's something that I see a lot of guys making the mistake with. Now that we have no barriers when it comes to publishing, let's take books, for example. You can publish a book every week if you wanted to on Kindle, every day if you wanted to. And it's not uncommon to see entrepreneurs coming out with new Kindle books, eBooks, every month. But are they memorable? I would rather, and this is the position that I'm in right now so I can talk about this firsthand, I would rather take two years to come out with one really great book that's going to last me a long time, have impact on a lot of people, and really make a difference in the world, then have 24 eBooks and the ego stroke of being able to go out and say, oh yeah, I've got 24 books. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. People want to know about impact, not numbers. You're looking for quality, not quantity. One great book is better than 10, 20, 100 mediocre ones. So I think you have to ask yourself, do you want to be great? Do you want to have impact? Do you want to really make a difference in the world? Or do you want your message to get lost in YouTube videos, Facebook posts, Snapchats, Instagram photos, eBooks, unedited, unorganized podcasts? It's easy to add noise to the world, but making impact and delivering great content Not so easy. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Reach out to me. At David Hooper on Twitter is the way to do it. 
Hey, speaking of making impact, next episode, five-step email process for getting clients on the phone, getting clients to a webinar, and building rapport so you get clients to buy. If you are looking to make impact with your message, you will not want to miss out on this. And to make sure that you don't, subscribe. Do it now. Go to redpodcast.com. One click is all it takes to subscribe to Red Podcast. If you're on an iPhone, you've got an Android, you listen via the web, one click will make sure that you never miss an episode of Red Podcast and you get this next one, five-step email process for getting clients on the phone, getting people to your webinar, and getting people to buy. Thank you so much for listening to Red Podcast. See you on the next episode. You've been listening to Red Podcast, the marketing podcast for influencers. Never miss an episode. Subscribe now with your iPhone, Android, or via RSS at redpodcast.com.